If you are wondering about why your faith might not be as alive as it should be, let me tell you, let Jesus Christ use you over the next mm. few months or the next few years to be involved in someone finding Christ as their personal saviour. Let me tell you, your faith, just seeing God use you. Yeah. As my faith has grown yesterday because of this opportunity. So working with God, seeing him open doors, growing in confidence, it's all about your faith coming alive. Hello, viewers. Now, if you didn't know, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us because the Lord has anointed us to proclaim the good news. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom and release darkness for the prisoners. Now, I like the sound of that. But the question is, how can we do that for others? Well, our prayers have been answered because there is a new app which can show us. It's called I61M, which expanded is the Isaiah 61 movement. Now, the app has been designed for Christians to turn this desire into faith-filled, accountable action, to set goals, access resources, and celebrate success. To talk with us more about the app is a familiar face to TBN UK. He is a co-founder with his wife of CAP, Christians Against Poverty, and you may know him from TBN UK series, Managing Money. Please join me in welcoming Dr. John Kirkby, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. Great introduction. Oh, why, well, thank you. <laughs> it's so nice to have you here. It's nice, really nice. And to you're be not here. here with Cap today. I'm not. You're here to tell us about this incredible app. So before we get into that, yeah. could you share with us a bit, a bit That's about cool. your journey yeah. in finding faith yeah. um, and a bit about your work with Cap for those yeah. who don't know? Absolutely. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I had a very difficult early life. Um, my father became terminally ill when I was nine. Uh, our idyllic life fell apart. As a teenager, I became a very lost, violent young man. Father died when I was 18, left school at 16. Mother was sectioned, brought myself up. I was an unlicensed debt collector in Bradford and somehow managed to work my way through the consumer finance industry, which all the experience came from. And then, yeah, Looked reasonably successful, but behind, yeah, underneath a veneer of success, I was a really broken, broken guy. I was married, two mm. kids. I lost everything. Ended up living in one room with our two girls, struggling to feed them. Wow. And then one man called Paul, um, I don't think he knew what he was doing, but he basically kind of could see I was just very lonely and he showed compassion and cared for me. And of course, you won't be surprised he was a Christian. He shared his faith. He invited me to church 32 years ago and I walked in completely broken and received Jesus Christ into my soul. He filled the hole that was a chasm within my heart and began a 30 year journey. So four years after that, I uh, gave my career up to help people I suspected in my home area with debt, they were in debt. I knew what to do and then by his grace and with a wonderful team, I had 25 years of building cap around the UK with 500 centres, but also Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the States. And three years ago, just really felt a sense of after 25 years. Um, it was never mine anyway, it was always his. Mm. And I just felt a sense to just hand it on yeah. to the teams around the world who have taken it and just see if God anything else for me to do. Wow, so that's amazing because God used that situation it was a terrible situation that the enemy would have used for evil, he but he used that to give you experience yeah. in money yeah. and got you a career. And then yeah. you were broken, like you yeah. said, but then God sent yeah. someone to come and save you. And then you use that experience yeah. to yeah. help others. That's a real yeah. slap in the yeah. face to the enemy. Absolutely. And that <laughs> compassion as well, you know, the, yeah. you know, I know what it's like to put things back on a supermarket shelf. I know what it's like to be judged as a, as a father, not be able to, send your kids to school with the right stuff. So it wasn't just that, yes, I did understand the finance industry, I'm very entrepreneurial, but it was the compassion that God had given within me for others and a sense of, I'm not gonna limit what God can do, but I never, you know, it says God is able to do abundantly more than you can dream or imagine. Mm -hmm. I'm just a lad from Bradford who happened to get involved in a vision from God mm. and he did all the rest. So all the glory and all the honor and all the praise to him, I and my wife, Lizzie, just sometimes sit and look at each other and go, no way. Yeah. We just no way. But that's, if we can't be excited about what God can do, mm -hmm. 
I think that's something we ought to spend a bit of time on. Well, well done, because you you essentially allowed him to use you. <laughs> yes. Some people don't. Yeah. So and you kicking have... and streaming occasionally. <laughs> but yes, we'll go with a yes. Well, he dragged come you on, to God, that come point. On, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, yeah. 25 years. Mm. How does it feel now to have stepped away from that? Yeah. Um, again, when something's right in God, it's right in God. Um, and as I mentioned, for me, it was never mine. And I'd been delegating it since I started it. And the teams around the world were, were really leading it and they were bringing a really new wine. And yeah, whilst I, would, <laughs> I might be a little vintage wine occasionally, it was just absolutely obvious to me, it's the right time. And they were amazing. It was one of the greatest joys of my 25 years of the way with the board and the senior team around the world. We just did it really, really well. And they left clapping me into my future and I continue to clap them into theirs. It's just an amazing example of what God can do. But when it's right in God, it's right in God. So just go yeah. with it. And uh, yeah, it, it's been amazing. And I've had a couple of years of just almost like godly obscurity. It was really good, which has enabled me to spend time without anybody looking at what we're going to talk about. So all in God's hands and we'll continue to be amazed. He might have something else mm. that he'd like us to do. How cool is that at 60? God's got it, hasn't he? Wow. Well, all in good time and all in God's time. So <laughs> yeah. skipping forward now, mm. let's talk about Isaiah 61 Ministries. Yes. Now, when did God first put this idea on your heart mm. and what was its main mission? What was the yeah. main purpose of it initially? Okay. Well, it basically started with me. So uh, I was leaving CAP and had some time and just realised that although CAP was seeing well over a thousand people a year find Christ and we'd seen 20,000 across the world find Christ. I remember just having a little bit of a moment. What about me? When did I last lead someone to Christ? Where am I sharing my faith? It was really gentle, very gentle, not hard at all. And that began for me a journey realizing that I was in really wonderful bubbles. So my family, Christian, wife, I've got mm -hmm. five children, completely blended family from my two girls, grandkids. I've got church, I've got friends, I've got ministry, surrounded by in wonderful bubble. But I felt God say to me, John, you're just, you're just storing up the seed and you're just building bigger barns and it's blessing you, but what about others? And I decided I would myself change that. So I did. So I went to train to be a, a chaplain, a police chaplain. So I'm a frontline police chaplain. Wow. Um, I worked with the frontline police uh, in Leeds. I set up a community group around my home. And the whole thing was, I'm just gonna create another bubble, another space in my life for people who don't yet know Christ. And it has been absolutely wonderful. So the Isaiah 61 movement actually started with me and my wife, inviting people around for cheese and wine, being open to listen to others, asking questions, getting out in the community. You know, we planted trees, a bit of organization, skips, clearing. I mean, it's in a city, Bradford, three mm. terrace, rows of terrace houses. It's, it's lively, yeah. Um, but it's been great. And I've shown, and I lived the principles of Isaiah 61 first and then realized I was not alone. So many Christians want to and know they should, mm. but haven't. So then I began to take it apart forensically. Why wasn't I doing this? What was stopping me? Mm. And yeah. It can be scary. Like you said, yeah. you're from Bradford. Yeah. 30 rows of terrace yeah. houses. No, three rows of terrace <laughs> houses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 30 in London, yeah. definitely. No, but when you're from cities, <laughs> it, it's quite, um, it can be quite daunting. Because yep. it says on your website, actually, yep. nine out of 10 people struggle to yeah. share your faith. Yeah, they do. Um, why do you think believers today have yeah. that struggle? So we've got, um, we've got friends to thank for the help with this. So uh, Gavin Calver, great friend of mine, CEO of the Evangelical Alliance. Um, whilst I was doing it in obscurity, I contacted some friends and said, look, this is what I'm doing. And they were very interested um, what I was going to do. And they, brought, they did a survey at the same time. And it came out with some really shocking facts. 44% <clears throat> of Christians said the number one reason they don't share faith is they haven't got any significant non-Christian friends. Another 40, yeah, yeah, another 41% said, well, I don't know what to do. And mm. I just don't know how to do this. And then if you got through either of those two, there was another quarter, 25% were fearful of being misunderstood. Mm. And any one of those will take you out. Uh, we are pretty certain now with the work that we've been doing with our own research and our own stats, we think conservatively eight out of 10 Christians 
who know they should, who really want to, have not shared their faith significantly in the last five years. Now, we approach that with a sense of opportunity rather than of, you know, upset. It means there's a big job to be done. And this isn't people who are evangelists. They don't think they're evangelists, but they are people who can share Jesus. And that's what this is aimed at. It's aimed at people who just can't believe they can do it. But I'm here to say they can because mm. we've now got 2,000 people who are using the app after we trialed it wow. for a year. We trialed it for a, we trialed it for a year completely off grid with 500 people to make sure it works. Yeah. And it really does. So I'm sure we'll get more into 2, it. 2,000 yeah. people already. I mean, yeah. that's incredible. That's mm. how you know it's God's work. Yeah. How many people would you like to see using this app in the nation? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that we've we've realized about the app is is its its simplicity is the thing that really really brings it home. So there are sort of three clear stages to it. So first of all it's share life, then it's share faith, and then it's share Jesus. And the sharing life section is where it all begins. This is a deepening new or existing friendships. So it's just beginning to look around you and go who are the people who I could deepen my friendship with? that I could find some time to have a walk, have a coffee. Mm. Maybe for me, it was go to the local club and have a game of pool and have a beer. Um, it, it's that simple. And the second stage is around growing in confidence, just to, just to share your story, the power of your story. And people say, well, I haven't really got a testimony and I'm not an evangelist. That's okay, you have got a testimony. Do you pray to God? Yes, you do. Have you seen miracles? Yes, you have. Has he been with you in difficulties? Yes, you have. Mm. People say, well, I don't know how to make friends. Can you be interested in other people? Can you be compassionate? Can you listen to what they're saying? Can you carve out some time in our busy lives for others? Um, and then sharing Jesus is really all about inviting people based on friendship, based on you sharing your faith, inviting people to experience Jesus. Um, and that's really what, that's what I was doing. That's where it all came from. So we, we did all the trials and the first trial of that really just didn't work. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's why you do trials, to find out what mm. doesn't work. I was, what problems did you have? Well, basically, um, we came back to the problem of good intentions. So everybody had good intentions mm. to go and have a coffee with a friend, invite somebody from the school gate. Yeah. Everybody had intentions. But good intentions are just that, they're just intentions. Mm. So I realised what we needed to do, first of all, was create something whereby people set goals. Mm. And that's really yeah. what the app does. The app allows people to set goals. And that is... That's the difference. And that's what me and my wife did. So we started, first of all, on bits of paper. And the, the stats are amazing. If you, if you just say you're gonna do something, particularly if you feel uncomfortable, you're unlikely to do it. Hence, eight out of 10 Christians not sharing their faith. Yeah. But if you, if you write it down, the person, if you decide it's something you feel you can do, and if you put a date on it, and if you tell others the accountability, yes. then that goes right the way up. Seven, so I'm currently about 80% of my goals. I've been doing it two years. Nice. I've been able to do. Now, the ones I've not been able to do, that's okay. It's fine. Um, so we realized, right, let's put something together really simple. So hence building the i61 app, which had been built and tested. And then when we did that, then we began to see some change. And the final thing that we discovered in the third trial was that you don't, we're not meant to do this alone. So you do it in groups. So in your midweek groups at home or in any group where you meet with other Christians, you just set a goal, you talk about sharing life, faith and Jesus, set a goal once a month, in this next month, I am going to whatever. And the accountability and the app and the goal setting, plus everybody's, everybody knows they should do this. Uh, people who are watching this, they're, they're, they're sat in at home and they're going, yeah. Mm. People do just that when we mention it, they go, yeah. When did I last? be involved in someone finding faith. Mm. Yeah. Do I know Do I know this is important? Yes, I do. Do I want to do it? Yes, I do. Mm. So the success of Isaiah 61 is built on people's humility and openness to say, this is me, and also a willingness to start. It's a bit like, say, couch, uh, uh, most people know the Couch to 5K app. Mm. Basically, imagine that in Jesus sharing. So what's your first walk between the lampposts? Sending a text to a friend asking them how they are, that'll do. So that's how it works. Wow. Well, I think it's like you said, when you have a Christian environment, Christian family, Christian friends, you go to church, you don't realise that you're comfortable. Everybody you know <laughs> and who you're talking to, you're talking about God, but they already know God. You don't 
oh, you just don't think about, okay, no. how can I share this message yeah. to non-Christians? Because yeah. I don't know any. And yeah. you get really comfortable. So you do. that's actually incredible. And the setting goals, it makes complete sense yeah. because... It's like me sometimes when I'm either trying to lose weight or do exercising more, you know that you should be doing it. You say, oh yeah, I'll start tomorrow. But until you set yourself those goals or you mm. get an app, yeah. you, that's when you start taking it seriously. Yeah. So it's an incredible concept and idea to put that into yeah. faith and to, because some people are not comfortable evangelizing. Not no, Everyone will say, not, oh, not everyone's not, not some people. Not some people. Most Let's people. Let's just call it out. Yeah. The vast majority of Christians. And we think, again, because of, we've been on this three years, this is all we've done for three years. One of the main reasons that happens, and, and I definitely resonate with this, so there are people who are, who are evangelists. And let's be honest, we all just go, wow. I mean, you see someone who can bring a gospel presentation to people they don't know, and the anointing's on them and people will find Christ. You look at that and you just go, wow. And we applaud that. But also, deep down, I used to watch that and I used to go, I can't do that. And here's mm. the truth, I can't do that. But that was what I thought you needed to do. And that's what we're trying to say to people. That's not, there's lots of different ways and what we've aimed for. We had a lady last night on one of our groups She's running a coffee bar at church and she wants to, she wants to reach the people with a bit. And she was literally saying, I, I've, I don't know what to do. I'm really frightened of it. I'm scared. And we, in the, in the group she was in, you know, we were talking to her and said, well, what about next time when you're in and they come in for a coffee? It's a coffee, little rest, people come in for a respite and have a coffee. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you just say to God, I'm going to go and sit with someone and I'm going to ask them how they are. And she went, Oh, I can do that. Mm, well, something right, as simple all right, as that. Do, right, write that down as a goal. Next week, I'm going to sit with someone and I'm going to say, how are you? And I'm going to listen and I'm going to be compassionate. I'm going to spend time to find out about people. I said, that's how you'll begin to share your life. And people will warm to you because the world is screaming out for people who care. They're screaming out. They really are screaming out. Mm. And, and again, I, I, I'm doing it. So I've got my own goals. And when you do a goal, you, the app really simply just flick it across as done and you get like a green, you get like a green bar. And mm. it, it's all about, in Hebrews 10, 34, it says, so do not throw away your confidence mm. for it will be richly rewarded for in just a little while who is come will come and not delay. And if you shrink back, I will not be pleased with you, but we, all of us, are gonna be people who don't shrink back. And that not shrinking back is finding some time every month with other friends. When you're in midweek groups, it fits perfectly into midweek groups. Mm. Um, you just go around and video of why you should share your life, set a goal, and it's electrifying. Mm. It really is electrifying. Well, I've just downloaded the app actually. Okay, great. So I'm excited to well, use it. And you're giving me a little yeah, you've got to training set a goal. course. Set a goal before I leave today. We're going to set a goal. Oh, well, we're going to set, we'll definitely set a goal, set a goal together because my group has got small as well, yeah. I think. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, really looking forward to it. So you've explained a bit about the functions yeah, of yeah. the app. You can set goals. In what other ways does it like train and equip people, not just to evangelize, mm. but to go out and speak to people and yeah. share their testimony? It, it's, it's really simple. I was, the thing that I wanted to do was make sure that this is just pick up and go. Uh, and it is just that. I do occasionally hear, it's wonderful people say, oh, John, can, you, can the app not do this? Can the app not do that? Can you not bring that? What about this? What about that? And by the way, I love ideas. I'm an entrepreneur. Mm. But let me tell you, this is the most entrepreneurially is. It does what it says on the tin. Mm. It encourages lots of resources, loads of videos to watch, lots of testimonies there to encourage oh, you. Oh, nice. Oh, it's all there, all on the app. And basically, if you sit down with a group of people and decide, which is happening increasingly across churches all across the UK, once a month, 30 minutes, let's just carve out 30 minutes of our church time we, we did some research about how often people, churches talk about evangelism. Mm. Wow. Uh, and we understand why it's not talked about as much as it should, because what else can you say? Well, now you can say something different. Mm. Now you can bring something that midweek groups can pick up and spend half an hour a month doing. Uh, and we put it on a plate. You literally, we've got, we've got new things coming in September where you just literally, it's on YouTube, you just put it on and we'll lead them through a 30 minute setting a goal and you don't have to do anything else. So we're making it as easy as we can and as simple as we can. Listen, find time, set a goal, achieve the goal, grow in confidence, share your life, share your faith, share Jesus. And mm -hmm. I have seen 
Um, amazing, amazing thing. I could just give you an example. That just, it's really, really simple. So I know lots of people now on the three rows of terrace houses. So mm. I was what I recently had a knee replacement. I was going around on my crutches, and one guy just walked out. I know him really well. We'll say, call him Dave. Came up to me. He said, "Oh, John, you know what's up with you?" I said, "Oh, you know, just had a new knee fitted." He said, "Wow, you're doing well." I watch you every night, just walking another few steps. And you know when you just think, you know that you should say something to someone, but you just think, "Oh, mm -hmm. it's busy." I just God. Yeah. I just got that feeling. So I just said, anyway, how are you, Dave? Mm. How are you? And he literally, right there and then, just opened up and told me he wasn't great. Oh. He just told me straight. Wow. Why? Because he's seen me. We've done litter picking together. He knows yeah. me. I planted trees together. I'm a friend. He knows I'm an okay guy. Mm. Sort of stuff out. And then I got that other thing where, you know, he tempted his Christian to go, oh, Oh, that's really, really sad. So sorry for you, Dave. Great. Mm. And then move on. Yeah, yeah, no chance. So I just said, stop right there, Johnny boy. You just, God's just opened up a door here. So I just spent five minutes saying, that's really sad to hear. Really sad to hear. Do you know what? I'd love to, I'd love to spend a bit more time with you. Um, do you want a cup of tea? Because I think it'd be good for you to be able to share some of that because that's serious. Mm. And I want to help you. And he went, yes. And I've actually got the text mm. that I got back from him yesterday. And really nice. tomorrow, yeah. we're having a cup of tea at two o'clock. Oh, nice. And I'm going to sit with him and I'm going to listen. I'm not going to bring a gospel presentation. Mm. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to share my life. I'm going to build friendship. As that friendship grows, mm. I'm going to grow in confidence to share my faith with him. And I'm going to believe that the opportunity will come for him to experience mm. Jesus. And, and it's that. <clears throat> and can you imagine if, if we got half of the 80% who are not doing it to start doing it? Can you imagine what impact that would have across our Massive nation? Massive impact. And, and, and that's what we're believing for. You said, how far can it go? I have no idea how far it can go. It's not mine anyway. It's mm. all his. Amen. But there's something different about this. It is definitely different. It's, it's, it, it makes and helps people actually do something. So what I often say to people is, but people say, well, you can do this, you can do that. And I go, so what? So what? What's going to make you do it? What's going to make you do that good mm -hmm. idea? And basically, systems create behavior. Systems help people do what they want to do. Now, if, you, if people don't want to share life, faith, and Jesus, there ain't no app and no system that's going to change that. That's between them and God. Exactly. I would say to them, read your Bible. Mm read your Bible if you don't know, if you don't believe that. But let's say most people do know. All we're doing is setting a system up that allows, so you want to, you want to build a friendship shape, you want to do it. Okay, well, we've got a system that will help you do what you want to do. We're not telling you what to do. Mm. We're just saying, this is what you want to do. And it's systems, simple systems, create behavior. Uh, and we've now just had our thousandth goal set. Um, and these are people who've not spent any time sharing life, faith, and Jesus. A yeah. thousand goals have just been set we passed we That's only incredible. launched in march we launched in march so a thousand got wow. so a thousand people just like you and people watching have gone do you know what i'm going to find 10 mm. minutes mm. and they've set a goal wow you know we're getting a hundred odd people registering oh, every week incredible. because people know there's something about this and we must do something we cannot let another 10 years go by mm. with eight out of ten christians not been involved. And also, can you imagine, we've seen it. So we've actually seen four people lead people to Christ using the app. Wow. Okay. Oh, now listen, if you, yeah, if you goal. are wondering about why your faith might not be as alive as it should be, let me tell you, let Jesus Christ use you over the next mm. few months or the next few years to be involved in someone finding Christ as their personal saviour. Let me tell you, your faith, just seeing God use you. Yeah. As my faith has grown yesterday because of this opportunity. So working with God, seeing him open doors, growing in confidence. It's all about your faith coming alive. And we don't know what God's going to do with it. But we're we're just excited by what we already see. Mm. Well, I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to setting my goals. <laughs> really do. You I am because like you said, it's, it's allowing people to kind of set goals for things that they want to do. It's yep. not forcing oh, them no. or telling people this is what you should be doing. Yeah. It's a choice. And we don't know and what your goal is, by the way. So no goal too small. Yeah. We know that you've set a goal. We, By the way, we don't know. We know that you've set a goal. We don't know what the goal is mm -hmm. because that's the joy of an app. Yeah. It tells the truth. We know how many people set goals. 
So we can see God using it and moving. Oh, so it's mm. gone around. It started up in lots of different countries as well, and we didn't do anything. Oh, really? Yeah, just we know. How idea. many different countries? Well, there were fifteen on the on the list on Friday. Wow. But people in Nigeria. We've got a guy in Nigeria set eight goals. Really? Oh, yeah. that's incredible. So it's not just nationwide. Then. Well, we've d basically Worldwide. what's happening is people are seeing it and going, "Wow, this is great!" And they're telling yeah. their they're telling their friends, "Hey!" And also, it translates into any language. Oh, brilliant! Just like that, and also whatever share life is in your, wherever you are. So wherever you are, whatever your share life is, this works. Mm. So wherever country you're in, whatever culture you're in, whatever your growing friendship is, it's your goal in your culture, whatever mm. shared you, it literally cross, crosses culture because whatever that is, and every Christian everywhere in the world needs to be sharing mm. life, faith and Jesus, so. Sounds really exciting, but I know <laughs> the viewers just want to know, how can they get involved? How can they download the app? Okay, first of all, it's all free. Okay. Amazing. All free. We like uh, free. World of the Generous <laughs> gets larger and larger, so we're giving it away. So you literally go onto your, uh, your app store, i61m, you'll find the app, download, register, there's a little questionnaire that you'll need to fill in, which is all going to get you thinking about it. That's the first thing. Secondly, we run i61 live twice a month, where yeah. basically anybody can drop in for a 30-minute online example. So we run, the, we run it for 30 minutes to show people Ooh. how to set a goal. i61 nice. live, that runs twice a month, and it'll certainly be probably running more in September. All details on the app and the website. Mm -hmm. And the second thing we've got is we realise that lots of people kind of can be quite isolated from doing it in a group. Mm. So uh, we've now got my i61 that's just being trialed and be ready for September, where literally you can join a group online oh, nice. and you will do your own group with a group of people. So that's i61 live is where we help you set your first goal and get you going. My i61 is where people can actually join a group. And also we would say, please, please speak to your church leaders, get mm. them to contact us so that we can help them. And we're partnering with churches across the UK to really make sure we get this embedded into the church culture and into midweek groups. So it's all there. Just come and see us and have a go. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for thank sharing. You. We've got some work to do because <laughs> I need to do my goals now. <laughs> so do. we're going to crack on. But thank you so much for Good. joining us. Yeah, thank, you, thank you for being so enthusiastic and encouraging. And thank you, yeah, TBN for your, yeah, just for the way you are. It's amazing. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and if you haven't downloaded the app yet, as John said, it's available right now, free on the App Store and Google Play. So make sure you download it. And remember that we can all continue to grow in that confidence as you share your life, share your faith. And that means you share Jesus. Goodbye.